This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare unto you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Tell us what the gospel is. How that Jesus Christ died for our sin. Or the scripture he is buried. He goes again the other day according to the scripture. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. As if you not preach the gospel to the poor. Send me ill, broken heart. Preach deliverance to the captives. Come to sight to the blind. Send it liberty, live that or bring. The word is not me. And then your heart and your mind is a word of faith, which I preach. You confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved with the heart, man, believe it unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God and the salvation. Everyone who believes that James verse also to the Greek, there is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. I want to welcome everyone to this broadcast a live stream, broke, Apple TV, YouTube, other devices, got got the names, my go, to my left, good morning. Good morning. And how are you? Doing well. Good. We're going to have some recorded songs of Terry By. Amen. Terry Bye was with me 30 years. God gave him to me as a singer to go with my ministry. Without a doubt, I've never seen or heard a voice like his that could minister the power of God as he did. Amen. I've heard some great voices, great singers, but no power. No power. Terry was anointed to minister with me. You don't know how much I miss his anointing.
is vain. God is the only one that knows. And God knows that I'm at a point, at a point, with this ministry that I need some extra help to mix my faith with. I will not be stopped I will not be stopped by the sins of God's people. I'm getting there. This morning, I woke up weeping. Because the darkness of the hearts of God's people are hearts not because of the faith of Jesus. of Jesus. And going in to the synagogue in Mark 3. And now he talked to that group of people I was reflecting on last night my broadcast out. I was coming after sin. Would you read Mark 3? Mark 3? Yeah. I'm trying to find the place where he did that. Well, it's Mark 3. I'll, I'll begin in verse 1. That's where you want to. And he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there that had a withered hand. And they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he saith unto the man which had the withered hand, Stand forth. And said unto him, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they held their peace. When he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored whole as the other. He was, he asked some tough questions, didn't he? Yes, he did. Religious people would think that he was not in love. Amen. Right? That's right. He said, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath or evil? Is that what he said? That's what he said. Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil? To save life or to kill? Yeah, to save life or to kill. That's the Jesus in my heart. And if you don't like it, I don't care. You 
you better get the liking it. It's for your good, not mine. He was angered, right? That's right. At their unbelief. He was grieved for the hardness of their hearts. Oh, yeah. Grieved. Hardness of their heart. Forgive me, he said. And when he had looked around about on them with anger, he was angry. Right. He said, with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he said unto the men, stretch forth thine hand. Now that's Jesus. The man of love. I'm loyal. But it's Jesus in me. And your hearts are hard. Very hard. Amen. The Lord has given me a partner. I believe uh, someone, maybe it was a Papadotus, was called a partner or Paul. Called him a partner. I think that's a blip. I'll look it up. The Papaditis. I didn't know we were going this way, folks. But I needed it. Amen. If you're looking at the King James... Uh, I don't know what words out on the page. Second Corinthians eight twenty three. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just all wrong, aren't I? Read it. I don't know how you get those. Keep your those hundred those numbers in your head. Twenty three. Uh, Second Corinthians, not first. Thank God. Hallelujah. It says. Um, and we have sent with them our brother, whom we have oftentimes proved diligent in many things, but now much more diligent upon the great confidence which I have in you. Whether any do inquire of Titus, he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you. Oh, so it's Titus. It's Titus. Well, I was wrong. Thank you. Uh, and that's in Corinthians. That's in Second Corinthians. Titus, Titus was called Paul's partner. My right? partner, right. My partner and fellow helper. And Bella, disciple. Fellow helper. Helper. That was it. Thank God. Thank God. This woman. Uh, woman. Is my partner. And Bella. Helper. God put us together. And she can be tough. Nathan was a prophet with Nathan. This woman is a prophetess with Doyle, David, son. April. The bar. Fifteen. I was on the floor. Good. Stand. Wait. Saturday afternoon, right? That's correct. Week. 
sand. Later, bond me. But God's people. I miss God because of sin laid upon my soul. My blessed turn a wrong spirit that was a religious spirit. Yeah, a religious spirit saying that, well, four million souls were going to be saved. I thought Jeremiah, four million. I was listening to these spirits. I let sin push me to go on world harvest, short wave, all of it. Oh, yes, I missed it bad. Amen. You've never heard the whole story. But you're getting it now. And I, I was in rebellion because I listened to wrong spirit, which I don't do rarely, rarely. I know the voice of Jesus. Amen. Sin of my soul. Persecuting me. Psalm 140. Great. Would you read it? Sure will. I'm getting on top of this wicked spirit. It says, Hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant. For in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has smitten my life down to the ground. He has made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me, and my heart within me is desolate. There it is. That's a psalm of David. Huh? That is a psalm of David. David. So David was in this position. Sure. Well, David, son's in this position. Got it? Got it. And I was just shocked how weak I was. And I didn't know that I'd missed God. And went on short wave instead of television.
Are you there? I'm right here. I'm getting on top, you know that? Amen. So, I was on the floor in my own plane I couldn't get up. God sent this providence to me. Amen. Did you kneel down? You were, frankly, you were curled up. You couldn't get up. You had uh, you had your feet and your legs curled up, you and you were what? near the couch. It disgusted me. What did you say? I said you were near the couch in the living room. Near the couch. Near the couch. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know it disgusted me? I was in a fetal position. Yeah. God, I do it. I do something that old of me. That was the scary part. You see, I'm aware of what goes on with me even in the bad times. A fetal position, a big baby. And you start talking. The spirit, I, this, just to make one thing clear to everybody, a prophetess is nothing but a servant. I'm, I'm nothing. I am absolutely nothing, and I know it. I am a small pot, not even a big pot, a small pot. And that day, um, the Spirit of God came up in me, and I walked over to you, sat on the edge of the couch, put my hand on you, and started talking. Okay. And I was speaking what the Spirit of God had in my spirit. And life started blowing. Amen. In the bar, it was spirit to spirit. That's what it was. Faith to faith. Gospel to gospel. But then Minutes. I got up and I said, I got to make an audio. And you said, You got. I was still full of the Holy Ghost. Don't you let what I say affect you. And don't you let that bunch of hard-hearted people listen, affect you, and condemn you for your boldness to this apostle. No. Yes, you're a woman. No, you don't control any part of me. <laughs> That's for sure. Amen. I got up, and you got up to go back at the audio, and you said, if you show any weakness, I'm going to shut the thing down. I said, wow. That was still the Holy Ghost in me that speaking. That was God in yes. me. Yes. Let me tell you something. What time? Oh, uh, it's 1125. 35? 25. Oh, great. Uh, I made my audio. And that day, that day, God ministered some faith to my heart. Strong faith. You 
were. My prophetess for sure. Had you got the same anointing and faith to turn my eyes? Got the same Jesus. <laughs> I know that. Don't be sick. Be strong. God's preparing you, woman, to walk with me. I'll minister strength to you, faith to you, boldness to you. Don't ever be afraid. God anointed you as a providence and set you in my house to walk with me. Well, I'm not sure what year, 06, maybe. I was down in the north office at Waterbuck. Well, that's where we're at. Yeah. That north office, right? right? Oh, my God. Right over there. Don't move your hands. <laughs> no, you don't know what you might hit. So, I was, Mason Clark was working there then. And I said, Mason, Get turned by. I was on the floor. Pains. Belly. Pain. Cramps. Severe. Couldn't rise up. And within two or three minutes, Thank God. I don't know why I clapped my hands. You asked me, I don't know. Uh, they said, Terry, you're near the building. Oh, thank God. You don't know how I hurt. You don't know how I couldn't get up. And fear gripped me. And Terry walked in to that office, Anthony's office. When he came to the door, he started blessing people that cursed me. Me. I pray for them that despite my years, pray for them to hate you and persecute you. Matthew 5, right? Yes. He prayed about Maybe a minute, maybe two. About as long as she spoke on April the 4th, 15. I think it was the 4th. And he prayed. All that stuff left me. I got up on my knees. All right, devil, I'm ready for you. I never forgot that. I told Terry Mike once that I knew God had put he and I together as apostles anywhere that God would send us. I knew we could overcome it praying. It scared him, but he had to grow up more. 
I've scared her. She's growing up. Don't you catch yourself. This woman's got faith. She's got a heart. She's anointed of God. It's okay. Are you there? I'm right here. If you say, I'm flattering her, you're the biggest liar that's ever listened to me. This is God talking to her. Establish it. The kingdom in her heart. Amen. And I do. Fifteen, when I got up, same anointing, same faith that Jeremiah had that got me up. You think, you think that I don't like to know where she's at? I get some terrible attacks. Or I thought they were. Amen. Can I put this in perspective? Oh, why, of course you can. <laughs> I have done this maybe, you know, that one time, maybe maybe another, well, I remember the time that your leg was curled up and we prayed. And, yes. you know, yeah. And, and Terry, am I the same? But, but, how many more times have you prayed for us in similar situations? I remember Terry Mai being on the on this platform for hours in severe pain, and you would come pray, walk away, come pray, and the man was totally delivered. I'll give up. I had another man that, that I lived with in Frisco that had um, all the symptoms of kidney stones, and he came here, and he was on the floor there, and you prayed for him while we were worshiping God, and the man was totally delivered. I don't know if you remember the time when I was first there. I wasn't there very long. And we have a large bathroom, and it's a large sink. It has two sinks, one on each end. And there's an area in the middle where I can put on makeup, and I've got a mirror and that kind of thing. And I was on the, there's a small chair, a stool that goes in front of it. And I was so attacked one day that I was on the floor. Do you remember that? Yes. And, and you said, Kathy, where are you? And I said, I'm on the floor. And you couldn't see me, but you came into the bathroom and you crawled on your hands and knees till you found me. And we prayed, and within about 15 minutes, I was back up putting my makeup on. So when you want to compare what you have done in the Spirit, obviously because you are the one that God said here as the apostle and prophet, and you cannot have a church, you can't even have a church without an apostle and prophet. I mean, even your ancestors figured that one out. Right. They could read. So when we compare about how many times that you have prayed for others and got them off the floor, and how many times Terry, Mai, and I have done it, there's no comparison whatsoever. I just want people to realize that, that, that most of the time in the house, we are just two people that live in the house that want the will of God. And we pray and we, you know, whatever needs done. But when, but yes, I have a spirit in me that when I need, that when he needs something done, I know how to yield to it. Spirit of faith. Amen. It is. And, and I've had the gift of faith work in me a dozen times maybe. At That's least. Fine. Yeah. And I love it when it does because when it comes on you, there is nothing, nothing nothing that can get in your way. I could face Lucifer myself face to face and I wouldn't be at least bit afraid. Okay. Other times, I'm like the rabbit that sits in the corner. I'll put some more in perspective. I have no confidence in you. There you go. But. And that doesn't bother me one bit. <laughs> no confidence in Kathy Davidson. No. And I've got confidence in a 
Lord Jesus Christ that she walks in and I got confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ that when Doyle Davidson needs help, he'll, he'll sit there or somebody like her. Amen. But it'll be Jesus Christ in them. That won't be any flesh. Amen. I don't walk the flesh. No. What's that? It is 1136. 36. Uh -huh. I'm overcome. I'm overcoming the devil. I remember a time I was downstairs. It was in the middle of the night in pain. And I finally, I mean, I couldn't get it. I finally went upstairs. I remember I woke you up. And I said, Doyle, I need help. You were awake like that. I mean, it was instant. You said, come here. And I think it took us about 20 minutes. And I was, I was delivered and set free and healed. Well, and I think I've only done that once. Betty, my wife, first, God gave her to me, 1952. I've been dating her since 49. And man. In 84, she yielded to a long spirit. Can I say something about the spirit she yielded to? Yes. That spirit made a woman think that she was more spiritual than a man. That's exactly what it did. And that's rampant. Huh? That is rampant in the church today. Sure is. You're speaking. And I know. The Lord of God. Right. And I know. I know that the spirit in me is not at the level that the spirit is in you. It cannot be. Cannot be. I don't even think it is. Right. Neither do I. Uh, I know you don't. I know you don't. You're a humble woman. You got a right heart toward God. I know that. It's a blessing to see it. As I tell you, I've dealt with a bunch of them that have no humility. Their hearts not right toward God. But they don't bother me. They don't bother me at all. I know who I am in the Lord. Now, any doubt I know, had a woman once thought she was really cool. She heard about me, and she said, one day, Doyle Davidson and I are going to have a confrontation. When I heard it, I stopped it right there. That spirit talking to me, I said, no way will we ever have a confrontation. We Amen. never did. Amen. You know that woman never could talk to me? Amen. Look, I don't have to talk to you. I talk in a meeting to the Lord. I walk in the Spirit of God. I'm happy to do that. You didn't talk to me for 30 years. <laughs> I barely knew you. I mean, I, like I said, I think I could count on one hand the, the conversations we had had that were less than five minutes. I don't think we ever talked longer than five minutes. <laughs> 
But I apologize. You were talking about Patty and oh, the spirit that came in her. You don't have to. Matt yielded to the wrong spirit. And we lived in Bearview where the master bedroom, I could look out the door of, my, of our master bedroom and I could see the bed across the hall. There's four bedrooms, three on the south, one on the north, west. That's my prayer room, by the way. Amen. And Matt got in all kinds of trouble. Devil wanted to kill her. I wasn't going to give the devil, let the devil kill her. One day I said, All right, Lord, if you want her, you can have her. But the devil is not going to kill her. Amen. And I can say that very thing to another person. Right now. Amen. Thank God. Anyway, out here, Matt, across the hall, I moved her over there because I propped her up in bed, shed a pad on her all the time, 24 hours. And AC, everything. She had it great. By the way, let me tell you, Dr. Gerard, an uh, art specialist, I was in his office with Pat Thanksgiving weekend for about that time, and he said to me, You've done a wonderful job with this woman. That helped. In February, she went to heaven. Or was it? Right. February. Yeah, it was February. Right. Next year. But I'd hear her and something make a noise at her. I'd be out of that bed in that room in seconds. It's like her art had a hookup in my heart. Amen. And I just come out of there, devil. I'll set her free from the tax of the devil a hundred times at once. He tried to kill her. Amen. Look, I know who you are. I love you. Colossians 2.1 I'm with you in the spirit. Sleep or awake. I've got you. What's that mean? It is 1144. 44. Got lots of time, yeah. I've got you. No, you can't die. You can not die. God. But let me know. Thank God. I know God. I know him well. I know Jesus. I know him well. I can tell you, my Terry Mai went to heaven the will of God. The will of God. Now, 
thank God. Okay, then? I'm a recover a lot. Do you know that? Amen. I'm as relaxed as. Whole lot better than when you first showed up. Huh? Whole lot better than when you first showed up on the, oh, on the platform. Oh, listen. I was in a great strength today. A great one. Amen. Thank God. I'd like to say that, you know, there's a hundred times that you went into Patty's room to, to get the pain off of her, to get whatever she had attacking her. And you found, well, when she, she said it before she left, if it weren't for you, Doyle, we'd have all gone to hell. And I think people are so... My prayers. Right, if it weren't for your prayers. That's exactly right, if it weren't for your prayers. I think there are some that are so self-righteous that they don't realize that the correction of Jesus being so austere and the correction of Paul, he said, you know, I'll come with a rod if I have to, is only the love of God. You know, I've met that spirit a lot of places and women, some and men, that took Patty over. Boy, she was mean. She, that spirit was mean. Wanted to destroy me. I bought it. Bought it. Bought it. Bought it. Bought it. Bought it. Till over it. You know, she looked terrible. Patty was a pretty woman. She was my first wife. My God. They bad. Hallelujah. That spirit was so mean that took her over, overcame the rotten thing. And that became a meek and a quiet spirit. Amen. Oh, yeah. Which God calls a great price. That's right, a great price. Right. A meek and a quiet spirit. She looked terrible. She didn't look like the 16-year-old I met. Nor did she look like the 50-year-old I knew. And I would talk to her. And I thought, <clears throat> this would be a nice spirit to live with. Uh, we probably need a song, don't we? It's 1149. You got anything? No. Let's have a song. What is that? All right. I know we got one. It's coming. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the, that's the neat, that is such a blessing that when Patty went to be with Jesus, she had a meek and a mild spirit. You know, that's, that's, people, you know, it, I, you don't understand, people that don't know the Word of God don't know that, that, Patty was put in your life for your perfection. And you were put in Patty's life for her perfection. And you got her perfected. You got her sanctified and ready to go home. And God dealt with your heart with Patty. How you stayed with her. You wouldn't let her go. You made sure she was sanctified, even when Patty didn't want to be sanctified. That's right. And you got her sanctified. And, That's correct. Right. You, you know, God gave a bunch of you to me. You, 
the singer. Is she here? She's right here. Yeah. Now, if you two want to be sanctified, I couldn't tell it. <laughs> I couldn't tell it. Now, to put down, if you think I want to be sanctified, uh-uh. Oh, when I first, you know, we, we get to the place where we think, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I am sanctified. Oh, oh yeah. surprise, surprise. Oh, yeah. Then God starts dealing with the heart, and then you don't feel so sanctified. Oh, yeah. I'm God. He's humble around me. Well, I've met him. My goodness, do they think they're Spiritual, they are. Wrong one. <laughs> Jerry Brown's here, I know. She's going to do a song written by two Canadian brethren. And Steve Hill of Canada. It's not Steve. Bob. Bob. Bob Hill. Bob Hill. Steve Hill was a horse trainer. <laughs> God. <laughs> Got some horses in my stable. He said this song said, I think y'all need this song. Jerry Brown's got it. That's what the cross is for, Jerry. <laughs> Life has your back against the wall Mercy's been there in the shadows Your heart won't let him in at all There's a cross of pain where Jesus bore all the burden of your sin A place where dying deep inside New life wells up again He upon your face listen to the answer is the cross you'll find Jesus there it's true oh I too was lost I've been set free he'll do the same for you Just 
Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God has given you the grace and the faith. You must be saved. Born again. One with the Lord. Speaking name after me. Be saved. Jesus. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327. Plano, Texas, 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas, 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.